Well, it's been a while since I could stand in front of this camera and in front of all this filament and bring you guys a new project. And as you can hear right now, things are quiet over here. And the reason for that is, well, we finally hit our goals for personal protective equipment here in the Ottawa region, and we were told to give our printers a much needed vacation. And while I'm super proud of the work that I was able to accomplish delivering stuff to first line responders, I'm really excited to be able to get back into doing project work. And I figured what better way to do that than jumping headfirst into a project that's absolutely huge and I may not even be able to finish. So what I'm going to be doing over the next 26 weeks is releasing 26 brand new 3D printed Raspberry Pi case designs. Some of these cases will have been tackled by other people in the past and this is going to be my spin on them. Some of these cases will involve retro technology and stuff from my childhood. Some of them will be full-blown projects that you guys will be able to replicate at home where it's not just a case for the Pi, but it actually serves a purpose. And I'm really excited to get started. So the first thing we're going to be jumping into is a computer that was one of the first I ever got my hands on, an IBM PS2 Model 30 inspired Raspberry Pi case. So that was a 286 computer and it had all sorts of sharp curves and stuff on it, and it really just shows what the AD aesthetic was like. So, I'm ready to jump into it, and I hope you guys are too, so let's get started. Now, before jumping headfirst into the modeling process, I thought it would be a good idea to look at some images of the case, just to make sure it looks the way I remember it. As you can see by just doing a simple Google image search, there are tons of images of this machine from various angles. The part that I'm most concerned with is definitely the front. I want to design it so that the USB and Ethernet ports of the Pi are accessible in the back, which will put the power and HDMI ports on the side, and the micro SD card in the front. In terms of what I want to replicate to the case, I think the front section is definitely going to be the most important, and I want to keep the four separate divides on there. So we've got an empty section here, then we've got the floppy drive, the ventilated part for the hard drive, and the power switch. Now my original plan was to have this floppy drive function as the SD card reader, but I would have had to alter the aspect ratio of the case a lot to make it work. Perhaps in the future I'll revisit this design and we'll be able to use a ribbon cable to have the card reader here instead. I also wanted to try and keep the two-toned approach. Many of these cases, as you can see here, are designed with light grey on top and the dark grey on the bottom, and I really wanted to keep that so that it fits in with that aesthetic. Other than that, the ports and various things that we need on the Pi will dictate how the case gets laid out. So the first thing I did when modeling this was to import a model of the Raspberry Pi 4. This makes it really easy to figure out sort of where the fans are, where the ports are going to be, and uh, lets you lay out the case so that everything just makes sense. From there I went ahead and modeled the case all the way around it, and here's the finished result. So as you can see, we've kept that aesthetic in the front. We've got the floppy drive, the power switch, the ventilated front drive plane, and a slot for the micro SD card. I'm a little bit concerned that when we print this and assemble it, that micro SD slot might look a little out of place, but we'll have to see how it looks in the final product. On the back, we've got USB and Ethernet, and I've gone ahead and divided the case just above that so that uh, it's really easy to slide the case in and out. The only thing we might have to do is flex a little bit on the side to get these ports to line up, and uh, we'll have to print it probably more than once to make sure that the tolerances around those ports is good. On the other side, there's really not much to show, but that gives you the entire design, so let's send it to the printer and we'll see how it comes out. And here we have our printed parts, plus everything we need to turn it into a functional unit. So the top was printed in filamentum electric grey PLA, which from my understanding is a material that was designed specifically to mimic the plastic of old electronics. The bottom was printed in prusament grey, and then I've got my Pi 4, a 30mm fan, some M3 10mm screws, some M2 10mm screws, and some M2 6mm screws that'll hold the Pi in place. So we'll start off by installing our Pi fan, and we want to have that blowing downwards. And we'll be installing that with the M3 screws. Now, I only had two 10mm M3 screws on hand, but you should definitely be using four. In my case, at least for the demo, I think two should hold it just fine. With our fan installed, we can go ahead and get the Pi inserted. So we'll go ahead and line up the ports on the back, and you're probably going to have to flex out the side just a bit to get it over the analog port. So just bend slightly with your hand. Push it down into place, and then from the side make sure that the analog port goes where it's supposed to, and that'll actually hold it pretty firmly, but then we're going to install the M2 6mm bolts on the inside screw holes. 
Now before closing up the pie, we're going to want to connect the power for our fan. So on the outside track, starting from the left side, we have 5 volts, 5 volts, and then ground. So you can connect to the, the fan to either the 5 volts and the ground to have it run at full speed, or if you're running your pie in a situation where overheating is unlikely and you want it to be quieter, you can actually connect it to the 3.3 volt one, which is the bottom left one here, and then the same ground pin as before. Since this Pi is not going to be intensely used, at least for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the 3.3 volt with the red wire going to 3.3 volts and the black wire going to ground. From there, we can go ahead and close it up and it's just a matter of lining up and make sure that the wires for your fan don't end up inside the fan. And then we'll use our M2 10 millimeter bolts in the four screw holes to finish it up. And our assembly is complete, so let's cut to the reveal. I cannot tell you guys how happy I am with how this turned out. This has got all the lines and sharp edges that I was hoping to squeeze into it, and I think it really channels the aesthetic that the IBM PS2 Model 30 had. Now obviously there's been some concessions made to keep stuff within scale, and also be able to hold the pie, um, but I'm really happy with the d way the details turned out. The floppy drive looks really, really sharp. The uh, details in it came out nice. The venting in the front, which also will help get more airflow in through the case. Uh, and some of the stuff that I was concerned about, like the way the micro SD card slots in the front, well, it doesn't really seem that obtrusive. In fact, most of the people I've shown this case to don't really realize it's even there. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 version, as you can tell by the dual HDMI on the side. Uh, but I have modeled a 3 and a 4 version of this because I plan to use these on a couple of my Pies that are controlling 3D printers, and I think this just goes along well with it. So the model for this is available on Patreon now for my Patreon supporters, and it will be released in the upcoming weeks for everybody, so everybody can get in on this retro goodness. Well. That's going to be it for this week. Um, I've already gotten a head start on next week's video because I want to make sure that I can try and deliver. And uh, it's also something for my child, and I think you guys are going to love it. So if you're as excited to keep in with this, well, make sure you're subscribed and you click the bell so that you can keep an eye on when these designs come out. If you have ideas for future videos and future designs, let me know in the comments below. I do already have a lot outlined, so I can't promise I'm going to be able to do everybody's, but I'd love to see your ideas, and I should be able to hopefully pick a couple of the ones that I like the most. Alrighty, well, that's it until next week, and until then, stay creative. <laughs>